Hello, everybody, and welcome back. It's Mireille again with QC Makeup Academy. We are announcing uh, the winners for QC's Naughty or Nice Makeup Contest, and in this video we will focus on the nice category. So for this category, um, contestants needed to draw inspiration from this uh, same kind of ice castle image and create a, a winter fairy princess look. Um, so I'm judged once, I'm joined once again by QC tutors Nathan Johnson and Azzy Williams. Um, Azzy, would you like to take us through kind of what you were expecting to see in terms of a winter fairy princess? Absolutely. So with the winter fairy princess, when we're looking at the idea of this ice castle with the, you know, all that sort of a story and imagination in terms of where this path is going to lead this fairy princess. So um, looking at the ice and the colours and the textures of what makes an ice castle and what takes a winter fairy princess through this, I was looking at you know a lot of texture, um, a, a lot of sort of that feeling of coldness, but at the same time niceness, which I think is really challenging to execute in terms of makeup artistry. I was also looking at really, uh, really delicate interplays of um, the, the idea of snowflakes and the, the um, icicles and all the delicate aspects of what makes a fairy princess that could possibly walk through this ice castle. Fantastic. Okay, so we've got our five finalists ready to go for uh, the nice category. So let's dive in with the first one, uh, which is uh, Courtney. And Azzy, why don't you take the lead here? Yes, yeah, so uh, Courtney's gone through a lot of efforts creating her fairy a princess look. And I think, you know, it's interesting that she discussed a lot in her story about the fact that she made the headpiece. Um, from scratch, which I think is a wonderful effort, and she should really be commended on that. Um, in terms of the uh, makeup execution, she has to really, really watch the attention to detail. Um, putting little applications on the face is actually very, very difficult. And the things like the center of the face where the pearls are placed right in the middle needs to watch out on how it's placed to make sure that it's nice and exact and precise. Um, also on the, uh, the cheeks, can really, really add that drama uh, with a little bit more contour work, um, a little bit more highlights, um, you know, add, add a little bit more um, highlight under the brow bone to just make it really pop and create that snow fairy concept. I love the blue and grey, but I think in terms of a colour palette, she could enhance it more with that pearlescent looks and the, the shimmers and just a little bit more of the pearl and rhinestone colours within the actual makeup itself to really make her uh, makeup and overall look really stand out. Mm -hmm, very true. Um, Nathan, anything to add? Yes, I agree. I agree 100% with everything that she said right there. And my thoughts about the precision are spot on. Here's where I... Um, Here's where I might have gone a little different. Um, because there's so much gray worked in, it almost goes, it almost goes evil for me. You know, because you know, you've got all that, you know, it's such an interplay of the two opposite colors where if it were more focused on, say, the blue and the pearly blues, I think I'd be feeling a lot more of the nice. But then you combine it with those incredible fang-like nails. And even the, the position and coldness of the eye that, that you know is, is given with you know the contact work, and we're in a we're in a direction that kind of tilts me toward evil. Not that that's not that that's a bad thing, but sometimes the way that we play with color um, can change everything. Whereas if these were just, if this were, there were just a little more lightness lightness work in there, I'd be feeling a lot more of of the nice. Good points there. Okay, great tips. Good job, Courtney. Uh, let's move on. Uh, number two here is uh, Itzel. I think that this look is extraordinary. I love the work on the eyes. I love the careful brow work and how those beautiful crystals and snowflakes and frostbite climbs right across the brow, starts down the nose, grows up across the temples. I think that the work on the eyes is absolutely gorgeous. The soft blues around and defining the eye um, the white and blue blend on the lid that turns into a soft pink through the crease and a highlight below the brow. It gives a beautiful, celebrates the beautiful shape of the face and adds an incredible warmth and magic to the depth of color within the eyes. When, me when makeup is done beautifully, even artistic and out there makeups like this one, 
and they can still so magically enhance the, the still remaining natural features of the person underneath. It's a, it's a spectacular thing. I think the, the, the work, uh, the contouring work that's done with the crystal, sort of like the reverse contour by sweeping it down in the white um, underneath the cheekbone is absolutely beautiful. I love the work on, on the lips, almost just that iciness, like I expect her to exhale and to see just a beautiful um, crystalline cloud come out of her mouth. I think that the, the work on this is very delicate. I love that, you know, the use of the, the snowflake appliques that fall down, one on the neck, two on the chest. I think it's beautiful. I think the, the use of accessories and jewelry is beautifully placed. I think it's a, a, a very thoughtful, incredibly precise, well-executed look. And again, it's, it's another look that I just cannot stop staring at. Yeah, it, it's stunning for sure. Um, Azzy, anything to add there? Absolutely. I think the operative word here is magical. Everything about this just really exudes magic and charm and beauty. And what I love about it is the blending. I think Excel is just really showcased and demonstrated how uh, absolutely spot on she is with her blending. I love the, the splash of pink that adds that really beautiful uh, warmth and niceness to a, an otherwise quite you know, cool and crystalline look. Um, you know, even the soft, the blue just around her soft gaze um, adds that little magical touch. I'm absolutely in love with her lips. I think the lip execution, um, creating a silvery um, and, and quite textured lip can be really difficult to do. And I think she's done a phenomenal job. I mean, this lip just is incredible. It's got a lovely cool touch. It's very delicate. Um, it's beautifully executed. You, you can see the attention to detail. Um, all the little soft touches of the crystals applied to her body are very, very carefully placed. Um, I think she's put a lot of thought into this overall look and everything looks really polished and serene and um, I, I absolutely love it. I think it's great. Yeah, it's a fantastic look for sure. Um, I think one of the um, elements that we would have just liked to see a little bit more is just a little bit more of a description into uh, her influence um, in this look. You know, who is this character? Um, how does she fit into that image? That's really the one area that we didn't really see um, where it was going, but in terms of, a, of the makeup, it's absolutely fantastic. Okay, let's move on uh, to Carmela and uh, Azzy, let's start with you. Yes, so Carmela, very similar to Itzel, didn't provide a, a very long story, so it was sort of hard to tell what um, the, the concept was behind her overall look and where the story was heading. But having said that, I think she's put a phenomenal amount of effort into her look. There's been so much time and effort to all the details, from all the pearls placed in their hair um, to the accessories and um, the little appliques of the pearls coming down. Um, I think. You know, she's put every little tiny detail in the chin coming up. It's very, very artistic and creative. She's wowed and surprised us with her use of colour and the blue, um, the vibrancy of it all. Um, I think she's showing a lot of flair for understanding colour palettes and, uh, you know, how to use colour to really wow and surprise us. Um, I also really love the silver. I think the silver perhaps a little bit too much under the eyes. We could blend it a little bit more, but otherwise, I think um, you know she does know her detail. She does know uh, how to pay attention to symmetry, which is lovely to see. And I think it's refreshing to see a lot of artistic imagination go into something that's just a little bit different. I agree. I think that there is an extraordinary, extraordinary amount of technical work in here. So many of the things that naturally set off um, triggers in me to critique are not present here. I'm looking at the, 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 the level of artistry, the amount of tools that she used from her, her arsenal to achieve this look. I'm blown away by the, the, the exactness of the line. Like if you look underneath the eye, if we first look at the, the way that, that beautiful white silver goes underneath the eye, and then we've got that beautiful um, JD green that goes right below it as well. Those two are so perfectly placed, and the lines are so precise. It's so incredibly, incredibly beautiful. The dots that come down the middle of the forehead, you know what? They may all be slightly different sizes. I have no problems with that because guess what? They are in a perfectly straight line. 
So that, that's the thing about symmetry. Does everything have to be exactly the same? No. But it all has to follow and honor the line so it doesn't disrupt the eye or block the story that's being told. And uh, you know, the, the smooth work, the work along the crease, the way that she's created a mask in the center, but she's done a mask in a different way. I can still see the skin below and some skin above the eyebrow through a haze, through, through a soft haze of silver. I can actually still see skin. And you know, I agree, there's areas where I wish it was drawn back a little bit, but I really love the commitment to color. I really love the, the tasteful details. I love the work on the chin. I love the lip. I love, there's so much that I absolutely love about it, but I really love all the, the extraordinary amount of detail look. And the more you look at it, the more you find more of. Like I'm just looking at it again now and I'm just discovering all the beautiful little dots that, that mirror the center dots on the forehead that are sweeping up from the low temple to the um, outer edge of the eyebrow on the two sides. Beautiful. It's just beautiful, beautiful work. And in time, as she grows as an artist, she's no doubt going to just learn how to achieve the same thing with a hair less product and then not have that little bit of cakiness below the eyes and probably have a, a bit smoother of a transition on the, you know, the two outer um, edges of the cheeks, um, you know, a, a little bit smoother application in the very center um, of the two brows. But there is a lot of beautiful, artful, and I think most importantly, thoughtful work involved here. Work to be very, very proud of. Okay, perfect. Uh, really great job, Carmela. So let's move on uh, to Marie-Eve, and Nathan, we'll start with you. Now, when we take a look at this makeup, I think that there's some really great things in it. I think that there's some really extraordinary things, but I'm having a hard time telling exactly how much is the makeup itself and how much is the tricks done in post-production. Um, there's an enormous, enormous amount of... Um, tweaking and smoothing and playing, um, you know, done with, done with this image through, you know, Photoshop or other various tools. And I have no problem with that. But what I do love is when I can still see the makeup and the skill involved in the application. There's so much, you know, haziness built into the, to the edges that I can't even fully see the outer, you know, edge of the face. It's sort of disappearing into the background. Um, I really would have loved to have, um, seen the makeup itself and not the post-production tricks. Um, and, you know, being a professional makeup artist, I know what they all are. You know, I've worked on, you know, as, as we all have, and as so many will, on so many huge major campaigns. But the joy at the end of those campaigns is 90% of the time, it doesn't look like they did very much. They just perfected it. But when I can see all the Photoshop work, it, um, it pulls me out of what I'm looking at. Now, to go into the makeup itself, um, I don't, I don't really see the inspiration here. Um, if, if those crystals were taken off the lip, um, it just looks like an interesting um, bright colored makeup that you know could be done for any sort of a, um, an interesting um, occasion. I do notice that below the eyes, um, there's there's not precision with that you know that drop shadow that sort of sweeps out into the dark circle area. If you're going to do a sweep out of that nature, you got to be careful with a color like purple because purple is the color that dark circles are. And when you start to, if, if so much Photoshop work hadn't been done there, we, that would be drawing the dark circles out from the eyes and, and further enhancing a look of tired. Um, I love the, the use of color on the lid. I love the way it enhances the eyes, but I'm not sure if that's really the eye color or if that eye color was adjusted in photo. You see, that's the danger with too much Photoshop. People don't know anymore what actually is real. Um, the precision work on the cheek, the blush, and the contour, it's not the same on the two sides. You can see that the outer the outer corner of the crease work it's not the same on the two sides either. The drop shadow on the photo left side comes in the blue comes in further than it does on the photo right side. That little bit of precision um, is lacking there, and I wish that there was more precision in the um, in the work of the crystals on the lips. Um, but you know, um, from a strong point, the skin looks fantastic. But again, the skin is um, it appears to me very 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 photoshopped. So I think um, I think it's a it's an interesting look. I don't I don't see the draw from the inspiration, and I'm I'm unsure exactly what is artistry and what is Photoshop work. Yes. Yeah, so um, I mean I generally look at the the images in terms of a couple of things. I look for the overall concept, you know, attention to detail, the technical artistry, and the overall effort. And I think you know it's all very relative as well with the other contestants. So the overall concept when we were looking at 
this idea of a, a frozen princess. And I think the concept doesn't come through uh, with the, the colour palette that Mary has chosen uh, and the sort of the leaves on the, the, the neck. It doesn't quite come through in terms of what a nice frozen princess really is. Attention to detail, this is really difficult as uh, Nathan pointed out. There's a lot of uh, post-production work here. Um, underneath the eyes, there seems to be a little bit of fallout of some sort of eyeshadow, but it, it just, yeah, it does look a little bit purpley. Um, uh, lips, definitely we need to have a look at ways to really create a more precise uh, textured lip, um, especially the bottom lip um, has a little bit of unevenness in the textures, just create more of an a, a, a evenness um, and, and polishness to that. Um, again, the cheeks, in terms of the actual contour and the blush, it's very, very difficult for us to give a solid analysis because it all seems to be sort of hazed through in Photoshop. Um, in terms of technical artistry, the, the artistry is definitely there, but I think a lot more effort can go into it to create what we really want in terms of that frozen, icy um, concept that we're looking for. Okay, some really good feedback there. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, and let's move on to uh, our final finalists, um, Rebecca and Azzy, we will start with you. Yes, so uh, looking at it overall, Rebecca's gone through an enormous amount of effort. You know, she's put so many different little elements and aspects into it. Um, it she's really beautiful. It's photographed really nicely. Um, it's just a couple of things that we need to look to really refine. Again, it coming down to that attention to detail, um, the little um, sort of diamond elements that she has to be very careful, especially around the lips, just to create more of a, a more even smooth application of those around the lips. Um, we're looking at them also in the inner corners just to create a little bit more symmetry um, in the inner corners of the eye where they're applied there. On the brows, again, just to create a little bit more preciseness on where they're placed. Um, it's something to also bear in mind is um, lashes. False lashes are very tricky, especially underneath the eye as well as above. Um, there's a little bit of drawing done underneath the eye to create those lower lashes, just to create a bit more symmetry and just preciseness in terms of um, where those uh, little white lines underneath her eyes are placed to create the illusion of lashes. Um, just also in terms of the actual makeup artistry itself, um, we could play a little bit more with the concept of light and dark and frozenness and um, you know think about again a little bit of pearlescent element, um, think about blending around the nose and the contour just to keep it a little bit more sharper and a little bit more precise. Um, you know, having said that, I think Rebecca shows a lot of enormous potential. Um, she's obviously incredibly creative and uh, she should really be commended on this work. I think it's overall very beautiful. Mm -hmm. I agree. Nathan, anything to add? I, I agree with everything that she just said there. Um, I, I, you know, following up on, um, the, on the precision and the symmetry, just to go back to the under eye lashes, if you look, one side of the lashes on the bottom are really, really, really thin. And on the other side, they're really, really thick. So that sort of, that sort of thing draws attention immediately. Mm -hmm. And then if we look at the contour that goes down the nose, on either side of the nose, one part of the contour is way down on the, um, on the actual side of the nose, whereas one part of it is coming down the center of the nose. So what's actually happening there is the nose has been made crooked through improper contouring. So that's the danger of contouring. Contouring has to be done very correctly and very precisely because it reshapes the face. So if you shape the face wrong, you're giving somebody crooked features where they once had, you know, like what I'm looking at in this photograph is a perfect nose that has been turned crooked. You know, and then a couple of things like, you know, back to the idea of self-editing. If, if all of those big crystals had been left off, if all of those crystals had been left off and that almost, um, that, that the shade on the lips and the shade on the eyebrows almost goes beachy. It's like one of those shades that people wear in the spring and summer. You know, to, you know bathing suits are so often in those shades. And um, if, if instead those crystals had been left off and maybe the eyebrows had just been blocked out and put in in a very soft, you know, pearlescent way, I think that this makeup would be blowing me away. But it's the it's the it's the slight, sort of slight over application combined with um, you know some of the, the the lack of precision and symmetry that is is sort of preventing me from celebrating it probably as much as it deserves. 
Now, I think that this is a, this that she shows an enormous, enormous amount of potential. She's clearly an incredibly, incredibly talented makeup artist. I think that the learning curve here is knowing how to pull back, how to look at things and assess them and make sure that something, when completely finished, just perfectly, cohesively tells the story but doesn't push it too far. Mm, really interesting point there, and um, obviously, you know, um, a tremendous effort done by Rebecca. So, really well done, great job there, Rebecca. Um, so, those were our top five uh, finalists for the nice category. So, for this category, the winner is receiving uh, Sephora favorites. Uh, Give me more lip. Um, collection along again with a couple of uh, favorites from Nathan's studio. Um, so just to remind everybody, our top five finalists were, uh, we've got Rebecca, Courtney, Itzel, Carmela, and Mary Ev. Um, Nathan, would you like to take it and announce the winner? Well, that would be my absolute pleasure. We are proud to congratulate Carmela. This is some incredible work on precision there. The, the amount of tools of artistry that she used are extraordinary. I think that the work here, the attention to detail, really deserves commendation. I think the creation of the mask that is still glowing out of an otherwise painted face is absolutely beautiful. I think that there is just some absolutely extraordinary, extraordinary work here. Um, and it deserves celebration, um, all the way down to the, the beautiful, beautiful hair piece that was created and all the texture that exists within that. I think that this is some extraordinary work. We've got a very, very talented um, artist here who I'm sure is still you know, growing and learning, and I think that we're going to be able to expect extraordinary things from her. Fantastic. Well, congratulations, Carmela. Really well done there. Uh, we will ship your prize off to you. I believe Carmela is in Australia, so if that's the case, we uh, probably won't get your prize in by Christmas, but uh, let's hope it gets in by New Year's at least. Um, so thanks again to everybody who participated in this contest. We got some really wonderful submissions. And uh, thank you so much to our judges, Nathan and Azzy. You uh, took some time out of your schedule to be here with us today, so we really appreciate that. A pleasure, an absolute pleasure. I love all these kids for putting in such a hard and beautiful work. It's inspiring. <laughs> yeah, I just want to commend everyone's efforts. I think these competitions really bring out and celebrate everyone's creativity and makeup artistry. And I'm absolutely honored to be involved in the judging process. And I do encourage everyone that's entered to just keep on going at it because they're all so, so talented. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we uh, we keep seeing the same names pop up in these contests, but we always get some new entries as well, and we, we just love receiving your entries. They really don't go unnoticed. Um, so congratulations to everybody. Well done. Uh, we're going to wrap this up here um, and say Merry Christmas to everybody.